from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Thai Cats Today with Louie B. Yes, it is Thai Cats Today for a Tuesday, October the 26th, 2021. Thanks so much for checking us out on the Thai Cats Audio Network. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I've got a great show coming up for you. We'll have some Tuesday salutations when Coach Sal John Salavantis joins us to break down. Saturday's win over the Red Blacks and look ahead to Friday's game against the Edmonton Elks. We'll hear from Coach Orlando Steinauer and we'll hear from the CFL's leading interception leader, and that being Cariel Brooks, who recorded his fourth INT of the season. So we'll get his thoughts on the way the season's going for him and how the secondary has been able to uh, click so well this season. Uh, we'll let you know. This is a bit of a surprising news to start the day, as we heard that defensive end Mason Bennett, rookie, uh, he's set to come off the six-game injured list. And yes, he was just put on the six-game injured list about, I think it was back in week nine. Uh, so, you know, four weeks, there was a bye thrown in there. So obviously, uh, Mason Bennett progressing well. We'll hear Coach touch on that in just a second. We'll also hear Coach touch on the status of of Braylon Addison, who had to leave Saturday's game with a hamstring injury. He'll update us on Frankie Williams as well. Uh, so we'll get to coach in just a little bit. We'll get to Cariel Brooks. Uh, but did want to let you know that tickets for the Grey Cup are now on sale. 108th Grey Cup tickets are now on sale. You can go to ticketmaster.ca slash Grey Cup. You can go to ticats.ca slash tickets. There are limited number of tickets available, uh, but there are tickets available. And tickets start at just uh, $99 for the Grey Cup social. And uh, you can go to ticketmaster.ca slash Grey Cup, ticats.ca to get your tickets for the 108th Grey Cup taking place on December the 12th. Again, ticketmaster.ca slash Grey Cup, ticats.ca slash tickets. All right, let's hear from the head coach of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Orlando Steiner. And as always, you can go to ticats.ca to catch out the full scrums, questions, and answers. Uh, but here's what Coach O had to say. And as mentioned, starting off with some uh, injury updates on a couple of his players. Uh, you'll hear him touch on Braylon Addison, Frankie Williams, and Mason Bennett coming off the six-game injured list. Yeah, Braylon uh, Bray, Bray, Bray won't go this week. Yeah, Frankie, Frankie, he, he won't go this week either, Steve. Right. Okay. And uh, we're, we're, we're not we're not rushing that back right now. So, um, you know, when when Frankie and if, is, is ready to come back, obviously he will he'll be back in the lineup. But I wouldn't anticipate him being there uh, this week either. Well, he's just he was progressing uh, good in his rehab and uh, felt like he was going to be ready sooner than expected. So uh, we thought it was a good time to get him out on the practice field, get him moving around and, and see if uh See how soon uh, if he'll be ready. Yeah, absolutely. We're we're gonna go with a, a two day prep week. I thought it was important to give the guys a little bit of rest, but uh, um, you know, like I said, like you mentioned, we we knew this was on the schedule, so we'll be we'll be ready to go. Well, I think they've been in quite a few games. I think they've played well enough to win. They just haven't found uh, ways to win. But like like you said, we don't focus on records. We focus on the opponent. And uh, we'll have our hands full. And uh, it's looking like it's shaping up to be a little bit colder weather game. So that'll be our first opportunity there. So um, like always, just looking forward to the challenge and obviously respecting our opponent, but uh, focusing mainly on ourselves. That is the head coach of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Orlando Steiner, as he spoke with us after practice today. And they're not taking anything lightly with the Elks coming into this game. Obviously not playing exceedingly well. They did make a trade heading into this game, and I doubt it'll have an impact on the game itself, but uh, the trade deadline is tomorrow, by the way, uh, in the CFL, and we'll be updated by that with uh, with Coach O, and uh, hopefully throughout the week maybe be checking in with uh, with Sean Burke uh, if the Ticats make a move or if they stand Pat, um, but uh, the like I said, the Elks did make a move as they acquired Nick Arbuckle from the Toronto Argonauts. So Nick Arbuckle is now a member of the Edmonton Elks. He's going back for, let me just double check here, he's going back for a third round pick. 
a conditional third round pick in 2022 and the negotiation list rights to quarterback Chad Kelly. So the Elks uh, staying busy leading up to the uh, trade deadline, but uh, getting set for the Ticats on Friday. All right, I'll be honest. There aren't a lot of team stats that the Ticats are leading the way in, uh, but they are in a four-way tie uh, for the league lead in interceptions. Four teams in the league have 13 interceptions. Hamilton, Montreal, Saskatchewan, and Winnipeg. Uh, and Cariel Brooks is leading the entire CFL with four. And we had a chance to catch up with him after practice today. And we just started off by uh, asking kind of, um, you know, how, why is everything clicking for this secondary? It seems to be going right. Everything seems to be clicking. Here's what he had to say. Um, I think uh, it's our preparation. Uh, we prepare, you know, very thoroughly, very detailed. Um, Coach Wash, Coach Butts, they're just coming up with game plans that's helping us execute. Oh, it was great to have uh, Deuce is what I call him. It's great to have him back there. Uh, he's a freakish athlete. He's a leader. Um, the guy flies around, plays hard, and he lines all of us up in the secondary, so we're able to play at that, that same speed. Oh, it's great. It's great to have Daly around always, especially when he is playing. He's like a coach on the field. We all see it. We all notice that. And just having him around, he's another one who helps us prepare, helps us get a beat on the other teams, so we're all ready to play fast and make plays. Yeah, Dad's Dad's coming along. Uh, He's a perfect fit for us, and uh, he hopped right in, and he hasn't uh, missed a beat. He's hit the ground running, and uh, he's making his plays. Um, I think I think we're pretty aggressive. Uh, we got a bunch of guys that um, that has been in the league for a while, like Siante, Rowe, myself, and uh, Tunde. Um, so we've seen a lot of these route combinations and a lot of these concepts that teams are trying to do. So we're able to play aggressive because we can anticipate what's happening. Um, yeah, they have Cornelius starting this week. Uh, I think we got about two games on them, and I saw that. Uh, he filled in a few games, so uh, we got a nice amount of film on him. And uh, although the quarterback changed, I don't think the the system and their and their their attack is gonna pretty really change. I mean, it's more so just that that the players are are changing. Um, it's very important. Um, not even looking at their record, they're still a, a good team. They still have a lot of playmakers, and, and they deserve our best. And that's how we're approaching it. That is Cario Brooks as he spoke after practice today. And uh, make sure to tune in tomorrow as we'll be joined by his DB coach and special teams assistant, Craig Butler. Right now, today, our guest, very pleased to be joined for some uh, Tuesday salutations with Coach Sal, John Salavantis. And uh, Coach Sal, I want to start in the offensive line. Of course, that was your uh, position that you coached uh, in your time here with the Ticats. And if I had told you going into the game, that Darius Sirocco was going to play a total of six, seven snaps. You know, Jordan Murray would be out, and Travis Vorncall would make his CFL debut. The Tigers would only be sacked twice and rush for over 100 yards. Would you even have believed me if I had presented that situation to you going into the game? No, I would not have. You know, I, I really, uh, the old line played well. But let's remember that we were playing the Red Blacks. We were not playing the top teams in the league. We weren't playing Winnipeg. But at the same time, you know, they they put up the numbers they needed to to protect the quarterback. I think Jeremiah was 25 of 28 uh, passing attempts, 320-some yards in the ball game. Two TDs, never turned the ball over. And he did run the ball a couple of times, which we talked about uh, previously, that he can hurt you with his legs, but he doesn't want to. He wants to be able to throw the football. So, yes, the O-line did a good job. Uh, It's going to be a little different when we go to Commonwealth Stadium uh, in Edmonton because uh, their defensive front's a little bit better than the Red Bulls. Yeah, and we'll we'll get to uh, Friday's game in just a second. But let's stick with with Saturdays because, I mean, defensively, especially in the fourth quarter, and we can include the offense in here – I, I think you and I both talked about it before the game. We wanted to see them keep their foot on the gas right to the very end. And, you know, they went for it on third and two with 
you know, five, ten minutes left in the game. The defense held strong till the very end. Were you happy with the way they closed out that fourth quarter? Well, if you remember in our pregame talk, uh, Andy and I were both in agreement that we wanted to see a blowout type game, that we wanted to see uh, a lot of man-for-man coverage. We wanted to see a lot of blitzing in the ball game. Shows you what we know. None of that was happening in, in that game. The defense played conservatively. They played to allow Ottawa a little bit of leeway uh, with their quarterback, not putting tremendous pressure on them. But at the same time, they, they seemed to have a plan that understood that Ottawa was going to uh, self-destruct before that game was over. And they did manage in the second half to really keep the pressure on in terms of turnovers and, and uh, not allowing Ottawa any real chance to be in the ball game. Uh, a lot of that was the interceptions uh, from Des Lawrence, from Simone Lawrence, and Cario Brooks, who got his league-leading fourth interception of the season. We've talked about it a lot this season, but the secondary has continued to impress. You know, there's a lot of talk now in terms of Cario Brooks being one of the most underappreciated players uh, in the CFL right now. What did you see from, from that group of players, and what are you hoping they continue to build on because they've kind of set the bar pretty high defensively through the first uh, 11 games here, 10 games. Well, you know, Louis, if uh, Brooks had tucked his shirt in, he might have scored <laughs> on that particular interception. But uh, because the Red Blacks were able to drag him down from behind, uh, he just got the interception. I think the secondary has played well all year long. And even with the uh, uh, Williams being out of the secondary, Roll moves over to the wide side uh, corner. They play extremely well together. I think that's something that we have to uh, recognize. They they have the ability to understand what's going on in front of them and to keep the the receivers in a position where they can always go for the football. So I, I think the secondary has played well. I think they'll continue to improve as the year goes on. All right, let's talk about this game on Friday because, again, it's a team that's kind of on the outside looking in. You know, the the Elks likely aren't going to make the playoffs. They're sitting in the bottom of the West. But it, it's another opportunity for the Ticats, I mean, to really try to figure everything out. What are you looking for in Friday's game? Well, you know, the, the uh, stadium in Edmonton has always been a tough place to play. And when they had a grass field and they used to let that grass grow all summer long until uh, it came up to your knees, uh, <laughs> it, it made it difficult. Now that's gone. But at the same time, the, the Elks are now in a precarious position. They've traded uh, Trevor Harris, their quarterback they brought in to be the uh, number one man for, for Edmonton. They're going to play uh, Taylor Cornelius. Uh, as a quarterback, a former Oklahoma State quarterback, big man, uh, six foot five, 230 type pound uh, uh, quarterback. But he's only started three games uh, this year. And he's put up three TDs, but he's put up six interceptions. Hmm. So you kind of look at it the same way that the uh, team played the Red Blacks. They may employ the same kind of a defensive scheme uh, against the uh, the Elks. The one difference in the ball game could be James Wilder. James Wilder Jr., the running back for Edmonton, can really hurt you if you don't play uh, discipline on a defensive line and linebacker play. Uh, you mentioned that stadium uh, in, in Edmonton, and it, it, it might have some scary memories for some players, but also some great memories for others, including – Jeremiah Masoli, who's had some pretty historic moments at, uh, at Commonwealth Stadium. Yeah, he really did. Uh, back in 2016, uh, Marshall Ferguson and I were doing a ball game in Edmonton. And uh, the quarterback at that time was Calaris. Calaris got hurt in the ball game. In comes Masoli, the second quarterback. He engineers a come from behind. 31 point second half of the ball game. During that time, he throws 23 consecutive completions as a passer. Both of those are historic in, in memory 
uh, of the Ticats. The uh, come from behind 31 points was number one uh, in their history. And the 23 consecutive passes actually broke Jason Moss's uh, record uh, of 22, I, I believe, at that time. So there is history uh, for Jeremiah. Now, the odd thing was the next week, Jeremiah was back as a backup. <laughs> and quarterback was, was again, uh, you know, uh, on the bench. But I, he really had a great game. So he's got some memory there. And hopefully he comes through again uh, this time around. And, of course, uh, he and Simone Lawrence, the longest-serving Thai Cats, you know, on the team right now, uh, both started their CFL careers with Edmonton. So two guys, uh, you know, who haven't been associated with the team for a while, but def- definitely got their start there. Uh, Coach South, always appreciate catching up with you. Thank you so much for doing this. All right. Have a good morning. We'll talk to you soon. My thanks to Coach Sal for uh, joining me and uh, my thanks to you for tuning in as well. Really do appreciate it. We are back tomorrow. Uh, while you're here on the Ticats Audio Network, may I recommend you check out a brand new episode of the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. A brand new episode dropped today. Get Coach O's uh, exclusive reaction to the game on fr- Saturday and uh, get set for the game on Friday. We're back tomorrow, same time, same place, right here on the Tight Cats Audio Network. I'm Louis B. Hoping you have a great day. Tie Cats Today with Louis B. Subscribe, like, and get your Tie Cats fix every weekday.